Hi, I'm Pamela Dingle, Director of Identity Standards at Microsoft, and I'm here today to talk to Andrew Shikiar. He is the Executive Director and CMO at the FIDO Alliance. Andrew, it's really great to have you here. Thank you, it's very nice to be here. So tell me what FIDO stands for. So FIDO stands for Fast Identity Online, and FIDO Alliance is, is a standards organization that's creating uh, open standards for better, simpler, stronger user authentication. In general, what you find is a number of competitors in any space or collaborators you know, see the need to work together on a piece of technology um, that's really uh, core to all their businesses, uh, where it makes more sense to collaborate than try to differentiate. And so when FIDO is formed, you know, there's a data breach challenge which persists today. And what FIDO's founders realize is that the, the core problem associated with data breaches comes down to user authentication. So you know, the, a dependence on passwords, a dependence on shared secrets that sit on a server. And so what FIDO is fundamentally trying to do is change the way people authenticate from one that is server-side shared secrets to a model where consumers and, and users can authenticate locally to devices that they use every day. You talk about asymmetric public key cryptography. How does uh, FIDO match that super fancy cryptography with yeah. something people can use? Um, there are two main ways of authenticating users. Right, so one, the, the traditional way of passwords or shared secrets has both usability and, and security problems. So it's funny, when I travel and I talk to people about passwords and I say we're trying to get rid of passwords and you know, as part of what we're doing, no one's ever said that's a bad idea. Right? I think all of us as consumers and as, as users can understand the, the challenge of passwords. The key thing to understand is that this data sits on the server. Right? Anything on a server can be spoofed, it can be hacked, it's, it's, you're susceptible to phishing. The other problem associated with this kind of password is that once they're stolen, they can be reused. There's a massive market out there for used credentials on the dark web, and that leads to something we call credential stuffing. The statistics around stuffing are, are staggering. For e-commerce sites, up to 90% of attempted logins are, are stuffed logins. Stuffing uh, leads to like, over 95% of account takeovers. What exactly is credential stuffing? So that's when someone goes on the dark webs and, and, and buys a username password combination. All right, so you hear about these massive data breaches, like the Yahoo data breach, for example. You know, I was one of those three billion you know, identities that was stolen, and you know, the damage to me from Yahoo doesn't really matter. Right? They could, the worst they could do is like, mismanage my fantasy football team. Right. But the real damage is if I use that same username and password on my bank or on other sites. And the scary thing is there's around a 1% to 2% success rate. Right? So you're talking about billions of, of stuffing attempts per day with, a, say, even 1% success rate. That's a massive number of successful logins that, that shouldn't be happening, right. which is why it's costing U.S. businesses alone you know, over $5 billion a year. If you use the same password for your bank as you use for anything else, you should go change it right now. So there's, there's basic password you know, practices, which Microsoft does a good job of articulating and educating people on. Any MFA, mm -hmm. right, any sort of MFA, even SMS OTP, which we'll talk about in a second, eliminates 99% of account takeover. And MFA is multi-factor authentication. Thank you. And the whole idea is it's not just one thing. If you use a password, you're using a thing you know. That's only one, one what we call a factor. Mm -hmm. With multi-factor authentication, you can use something you know, or something you have, yep. you know, your phone, for mm -hmm. example. And then the other one is something you are, which is biometrics, yes. meaning you're gonna use your face or your thumbprint, yep. stuff like that, right? So FIDO is solving the problem by creating standards. Mm -hmm. right? So we're creating the, the, the standards for you know, FIDO authentication. Right? So it, it, again, it leverages that, that big word, asymmetric public key cryptography. But what that really means is that you're, you're, instead of putting a password on the server, mm -hmm. we use a, a key pair. And it's called a, a private key, which sits with you on your device, and a public key sits on the server. Unlike a password, the public key has no material value. All right? So some hacker comes in and steals a whole raft of you know, public keys. There's nothing that they can be done with those. And now when I go to log in, once I've set up the FIDO account, I have to unlock, basically activate the private key on my device. Mm -hmm. And I can do that by a biometric or any sort of way of verifying myself to my device, which is I can uniquely do. And then that key pair can be matched. There's a lot of data exchange in that interchange that's unique to the website, unique to the private key, uh, that makes it such that only you with that device can log into that site. I mean, this is sort of the holy grail of authentication. It should be easy for the user, and it should be really, really difficult for the hacker. And that, of course, does not happen with passwords. Passwords tend to be really hard for users yep. and really easy for hackers. So if you look at this from a business standpoint, you know, passwords are a liability. Right? So you, you're basically managing, if you're managing consumer identities, you're managing tens or hundreds of millions of, of you know, very valuable pieces of information, which are at risk because they're sitting on a server. So that's a, that's a major liability. There's also a usability issue for businesses. If people can't remember a password, passwords lead to like half of shopping cart abandonments. So that's money on the table that you're not getting because people can't log in. For consumers, you know, the risk is that, you know, identity theft, account takeover, bad charges, you know, all sorts of, all the negative things that happen when your identity is stolen. 
And then, you know, you look at new form factors, right? So I just redid my house and I have all these smart TVs. I'm trying to log into smart TVs and remember my passwords because it's all password based. I can remember my passwords because I have my own you know, approach to it, but then entering it with the remote controls, is, you know, it's like the seventh rung of hell. You it's know? terrible. It's horrible. <laughs> and it's a, it's a bad experience, right? Yes. So again, trying to simplify the user experience while providing a more secure user experience is, is really what FIDO is very much focused on. I mean, we've talked about public key cryptography and all this great sort of thing, but what is it that users actually get to see and do yeah. that is so much better than passwords? Consumers have gotten accustomed to using a biometric on a device every day. Right? And so for, at first it was very unnatural to unlock your phone with a right. thumbprint rather than typing in a passcode. Or also sometimes in enterprise you'll get a security key. They come in a, a number of form factors from a USB key to NFC cards, whatever it may be, that allows you to use that as a second factor or as a primary source of login as well. I mean, that sounds great, but I'd love to see one. Do we have any here? As a matter of fact, we do. Wow. I, I travel with a pocket full of security keys out of, out of best practice. <laughs> these are some examples of these. So this is a USB transport. See, I will play hand model. This one actually uses a FIDO certified mark, which I like them doing. So we certify these devices to show that they yeah. truly do interoperate with each other. So this is a, a FIDO 2 security key. Mm -hmm. It has both the USB, where you just have to touch it, but it also has a biometric scanner too. So it literally doesn't work unless you scan your fingerprint? Correct, That's correct. Amazing. It's a higher level of, it's an even higher level of authentication than just proving presence. That's great. This one is a Bluetooth model. Mm -hmm. This supports Bluetooth and I think NFC, where you, you just click it. So basically you don't have to plug this in, obviously. Nope. So you would pair it with your laptop and then it would just sort of magically ask you to touch it. They ask you to insert or, or activate your, your, your FIDO security key. In this case, you just press that button. That would communicate via Bluetooth to your laptop or your tablet or your smartphone. Speaking of smartphones, this one has USB-C, which is good for you know, modern laptops, but also for you know, a lot of like Android devices these days or any, any device that has USB-C power. Whereas initially, I think it's fair to say that the security keys were primarily used on the desktop in the enterprise. What we're seeing now is these innovations to you know, bring security keys to mobile phone users and, and device users as well. I don't know if you can see this, but there's these little touch points on either side. The whole idea is you always have to have a human gesture yes. in FIDO. Yes. So you, you have, you know, it can't just be all computers. There has to be a human element. So you plug it in, and then when you're prompted, you just touch the side and, and then yep. you're logged in. That's and great. last but not least, this is, I love this one. This could also serve as a employee badge. Mm -hmm. You have a badge that gets you in the door. But you can now have that same badge that gets you in the door. It can also be your FIDO security key. So communicating by NFC or Bluetooth to your laptop as a security key. There's even like a little a USB thing little that sticks in there as well. It's an incredibly- Is this awesome or is this awesome? It's awesome. So That's you think great. about perimeter security, you know, logical security, access security, all those things are built into to one key. This is a tiny sampling. We have over 600 FIDO certified products on market. And depending on your use case or your company's use case, um, you can bring a, a blend of these into the enterprise. What? We love about it at Microsoft is that we can get out of the business of making authenticators, yeah. right? We can build to a standard, and then the standard allows anyone who wants to build something to be enabled. So, you know, for us, we feel like it fosters innovation by being open. That all comes back to the benefit of standards and collaboration. Microsoft participates, yeah. Google participates, Apple participates, all of these big companies. Yeah. So how do they work together to make this happen? It starts with the specifications, right? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, technical specifications that underlie FIDO authentication. The specifications are developed mutually amongst these large companies, and then they're, they're ratified, and eventually you know, we, we test products on top of that through the interop and certification test. I know on the part of Microsoft, uh, we feel like FIDO Alliance is incredibly strategic to us for this very reason that you can't replace passwords with one proprietary solution. If we're going to change the way that people represent themselves online, we have to do it across the board. It has to work everywhere all the time. Yep. And so you should be able to log in on an Apple computer to authenticate to a Microsoft service mm -hmm. that then takes you, you know, across on a, uh, on a Google browser to, you know, and maybe uses an additional key made by a small manufacturer yeah. that happens to make the right kind of security paradigm work for a customer. Yeah. And certainly for Microsoft, we really believe in getting the world to a place where they can use anything they want, anytime they want, and anywhere they want. Absolutely, and, and there's a commitment. Right? It's not just mm -hmm. a, a financial and a verbal commitment, but there's a product commitment. Yeah. Right? So last year, in 2019, we saw major platforms start to support FIDO and FIDO2. Right. Right, so led by Microsoft with support of FIDO2 in, in Windows Hello, meaning that any Windows 10 PC now has FIDO capabilities built in. That's amazing. So great. It's Android, so great. you know, so Google making Android 
you know, the same thing. Basically, so any Android 7 or later handset can serve as a FIDO authenticator. Meaning, so in both these instances, that means that <clears throat> when, when the service provider supports FIDO, mm -hmm. you know, they can allow me to authenticate with the platform authenticator, with that biometric on my PC, with that biometric on my Android phone. Right, it's collaborative security. That's what I love about it. Absolutely is. Right, we absolutely. use standards so that there's no uh, advantage either way for anyone, but everyone can participate. All right, so now we have billions of devices that are FIDO capable. We have every web browser now you know, FIDO capable, and I think our next challenge as an organization is enabling deployments. Right, so best practices for how you deploy to consumers. I would love to see what this might look like. Yeah. These, these are cool. Yeah, they are cool. How do they work? One example would be like Google Services, which has long supported FIDO authentication. When I go to log into Google, I'm then prompted to you know, show my security key. And my security key could be any of these things. So if I take this USB key, for example, I just insert this in the USB port and I touch this to prove that you know, I'm physically present. You know, with that device. So yeah. I brought my key. This is the one I use yeah. every day. So you can see it's a slightly different key from the ones we've seen. Mm -hmm. So every morning I open my laptop, you know, use my finger on the reader, yeah. and I go to work. Yeah. There's no, you know, nothing gets in the way. I don't have to pull anything out of my bag. But the one time, my, maybe my fingerprint doesn't work, I pull out my security key plug it in and I can still go to work. So it, it gives you this flexibility. Absolutely, it's also good in, in the event that you change your laptop. So speaking of fingerprint, on my Pixel phone, I could log in with eBay, for example. Right. eBay is enabled FIDO2 and, and at, at point of login on Android. Instead of asking for a password, now I just use my fingerprint. Right, I think the value proposition for FIDO that's really important for people to understand is we're talking about mixing and matching all of the vendors, all of the hardware. And it's not just, you know, getting rid of forcing the user to enter a password. What FIDO does is fundamentally change that. It has further security for the user and for the service provider that's you know, actually invisible to the user at this point. Right. And a big part of what FIDO does also is protect user privacy. I think that's very important. All my credentials stay local on my device, whether it's my biometric or a pin code, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that's never transmitted over the internet. It's not sitting on a server, no one has access to that other than the encrypted key on your device. So one of the things that Microsoft takes very seriously mm. is diversity and inclusion. And we have a lot of uh, work that we do uh, in our products and, and around the world on accessibility and inclusion. So how do you feel FIDO Alliance helps move us in that direction? When you move to strong authentication, simplicity is really important. Right, especially for like emerging markets or more at-risk you know, cohorts of society. You know, many of these people don't have a password or they're using a device for the first time. You know, so they need to have systems that allow them to you know, securely access identity credentials and online services without putting them at risk of, of being fished. I think the worldwide availability of this is an advantage as well because uh, you don't have to buy an expensive solution. You can, in fact, use things like you know, the hardware that comes with your laptop. Right now in India, people use SMS OTP to verify a lot of transactions, which has really poor deliverability rate. I mean, it's 80%, but that's still 20% of transactions are, have a hard time being consummated. Mm -hmm. And so we have vendors who are now bringing this into market in India where instead of doing that, you just use a local PIN code on the device. So it's not a biometric, because you don't need a super high-end device. The pin code leveraging the FIDO model is just as good, because it's local and it can't be you know, transmitted or stolen. All of these different authenticators can evolve to meet different markets too, right? Absolutely, so. absolutely. A little closer to home, you know, we look at um, you know, aging population here in the U.S. or, or, or kids in the U.S., right? They have unique needs also. Um, and we need to protect you know, these people from, from getting taken advantage of. And we think that FIDO is one way that they can very easily you know, learn how to authenticate uh, without having to take on the risk of passwords or getting fished. Has there ever been a time where this kind of inclusion has hit you personally? You know, I have two little girls and they're in the elementary school and, and, and I walked in the first day of school this year and everyone got a Chromebook and they're like, okay, go to the wall. There's your name, there's your device, there's your password on the wall. Is it a huge thing? Not necessarily, but it's teaching bad password hygiene, but also it puts them at risk. You know, it's, it's a tough challenge, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so the reason why they have that password thing there is because otherwise the kids will forget it. So this goes to like, what's FIDO? How would FIDO do this? I wouldn't trust our school district to share, you know, store my kids' biometrics, let alone most of their data. But with the FIDO authentication approach, they certainly could actually use a biometric on those devices, which are all biometric equipped, and log in that way rather than having to have shared passwords across the classroom. Well, I wanted to ask you about something fun, something you do, you know, for a good time around the house. So tell me what kinds of books you're reading. So a book I read recently, which you know, resonated with me strongly, was a book called A Woman of No Importance. It's a story of a woman by the name of Virginia Hall um, in the 1930s. Um, she's an American woman from actually you know, a nice family in Baltimore. She had a thirst for adventure. She went to Europe and really found herself in Europe. But then the war was coming. She you know, somehow found herself being at the tip of the spear of the resistance against the Nazis. What she did was so successful, you know, it got to the point where she was the number one most wanted spy you know, being pursued by the Nazis. 
an amazing story. And she did all this, mind you, on one leg. Not to try to bring this back to Fido, but all of us inside of Fido Alliance, I think we're, we have a little missionary thing about us, right? I think going back to the diversity and inclusion theme, I think the fact that she was a woman held her back. All right? She had to fight all the institutional sexism. But after her service, she never really got the recognition she deserved. Well, thank you so much for spending your time talking about you know, what we're working on. And uh, I just want to say on behalf of Microsoft that we really enjoy working in the Alliance. And it feels like this is a big deal. It feels like we are pushing towards a world where we can actually eliminate passwords. Well, thank you for having me. And, and, and thanks to Microsoft for the support of the Alliance. I, I can say unequivocally that without Microsoft's kind of staunch support of Fido and everything we're doing, not just from a technical standpoint, but from a marketing and branding standpoint, and really helping educate the world about Fido, um, without that support, I don't think we'd be as far along as we are.